Hey, it's Jeff Zito, and thanks for listening to another episode of Celebrity Jobber. So think about this for a minute. Biggest rock star in the world. One of them, at least. Number one songs. Touring the world. Selling out arenas. 20,000 people per show. You did it. And then all of a sudden, you say, I'm out, not doing it anymore. That's what happened with our next guest, Adam Gontier, formerly the lead singer of the band Three Days Grace. It was like their peak of success. Adam announced he was out. And uh, the band Three Days Grace carried on with another singer. And um, and Adam eventually formed his own project. Well, why? What happened? We're going to ask him. Plus, we'll talk about Adam's first job and maybe what he would be doing if he wasn't a rock star. It's, it's Adam Gontier, formerly of the band Three Days Grace, and now in the band St. Asonia. My guest this week on Celebrity Jobber. The Celebrity Jobber podcast with Jeff Zito. If you like what you hear, please subscribe, give a five-star rating, and leave a review. Check out all our past episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you pod. What if these celebrities weren't famous? What would they have become? What was their first job? We're about to find out. Hey, Adam. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. Where Where are you these days? Are you in Canada? Uh, no, I'm in Nashville, actually. Man, I hear Nashville has become like, you know, forget country music, just as far as music in general. It's just, it's become another L.A. and New York. Is, is it some truth yeah, to that? I think so. I mean, I know a, a quite a few uh, friends of mine uh, that moved here over the last, few years um yeah seems like a lot of at least a lot of uh rock uh musicians that i know um have set up set up shop here it's uh it's kind of i mean it's kind of great for writing and uh you know seeing shows and all that stuff right so, yeah it's a yeah it's a good good town for that stuff now are you are you living in nashville or are you just there on on business as they say no, I live in Nashville. Actually, I I, uh, I have a place in Canada as well, in our hometown of Peterborough. But uh, so I go up there. We go up there um, in the summers to uh, yeah to spend some time uh, with the family in the summers. But for most of the year, I I live uh, in Nashville. Now a uh, little bit different up in in Peterborough and in, in Ontario as far as. Uh, you know, your surroundings, I mean, you're, it's pretty wide open country, uh, for the most part. Am I, am I right? I mean, I'm sure there's a town, but, but there's a lot of land. There's a lot of hunting. There's a different way of life there. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, it's a couple hours from Toronto. So it's a little bit Northeast of Toronto and Peterborough itself. Uh, I think there's about 80,000 people in the town. So it's a, it's a decent sized city, but, uh, I mean, compared to most other cities, it's pretty small. Yeah, and then surrounding it, it's all farmland and, like you said, a lot of hunting and a lot of lakes and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, a little bit different. But, you know, I also live outside of uh, Nashville, about 20 minutes south. So kind of uh, kind of the same okay. this way as well. Lots of lots of land and uh, stuff. You know, I'm, I'm into that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I, 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 I remember talking to a, a couple of you guys. A long time ago, and you were, uh, you guys, a couple of you guys were telling me about, um, because I'm fascinated with the land, Um, not as much of a hunter, but uh, I love to fish, I love to hike, I love to, you know, just be out outside and um, just sounded Mm -hmm. like you were, uh, you guys were from paradise. Uh, I want to go up there and (laughs) I want to go up there and experience it a little bit myself, so... It is really nice. Yeah, Canada Canada is great for that, uh, for sure. Yep. Well, tell me about growing up there. What did you do when you were younger? Did you just have a regular, ordinary life as a kid growing up in, in Peterborough? Uh, pretty much. I mean, it was. Uh, I was born in Peterborough, and then uh, my family moved to a town outside of Toronto uh, called Markham. And I, I basically spent... Uh, about the first, uh, well, about 10 years we spent there until I was about 11 or 12. We spent in, uh, just outside of Toronto. So, um, uh, my parents split when I was about 10 and then, uh, that's when I moved, uh, back to Peterborough. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, it was all it was it was pretty normal. I mean, aside from my my parents getting <laughs> getting divorced, right? That was you know it, uh, it kind of that was the the right thing to do. And I, as a kid, I, I mean, I was I was okay with it. You know, I didn't it didn't really didn't really bother me too much. So yeah, yeah, no, it was for the most part, it was pretty pretty normal. Childhood. I met you know in in uh, Peterborough, outside of Peterborough, going to high school there and stuff is where I met um, the other guys in the band. Uh, and yeah, we started a band in high school and then <laughs> never looked back. Wow. So did you? Uh, you know, and I would imagine at ten years old, even though you say that it didn't bother you, I would imagine at ten years old that that's that's a pretty tough year to to go through a, a, a divorce. So did you go back to Peterborough to live with mom or or dad? Well, I actually lived uh, in Markham with my mom for uh, a couple years, and then I, I think it was about three, three or four years. And then for the first year of high school is when I moved uh, back to the Peterborough area uh, to go to high school in Peterborough, and, and my dad lived okay. in that area. So I moved, yeah. At about 14, moved uh, back in oh, with geez. him and started high school in Peterborough. What went on as far as sports and did you play any sports growing up? And, you know, what were you doing when you were a young kid? Were you into music at that time or did that come yeah, a little bit later? I was into, I, I played a lot of sports. I played, um, yeah, I played everything from hockey to baseball to football and basketball basically those four um and i played it played it a lot like in high school you know it was pretty decent um and so yeah it was a lot of that but there was also a lot of music so there was my my family is pretty musical my mom's side of the family is very musical so i grew up with her uh playing piano in um like piano bars and that sort of thing oh cool uh, so I was, yeah, I was influenced by music pretty early on. So there was a little bit of both in the small town of Peterborough and sort of outside of Peterborough, uh, Norwood, specific town where we went to high school. There wasn't anything. Um, the only the only thing you could do is basically go to school and play sports. So that's right. kind of what we did. And um, that's where I met Brad uh, Waltz, the bass player for Three Days Grace. That's right. where I met him and we had the same sort of interest in uh, bands, in, in certain bands, and uh, we started just playing music together because I, I already played guitar and sang, but I needed someone to jam with in Norwood. So I, I convinced him to get a bass guitar for Christmas so we could do some jamming. <laughs> now, now, you said your, your family was pretty musical and your mom played mm -hmm. piano, like at a piano bar. Was she a professional musician and did it did or what you know like what was your your parents occupation when you were growing up yeah my mom my mom was a musician she uh she played uh piano um jazz piano and contemporary stuff in different hotel lounges like back you know back in the 80s and into the early 90s that was a that was a pretty standard thing to have um musicians playing at the piano like a piano player in a lounge in the hotel and that sort of thing so yeah that's what that's what she did for a living my dad did construction work but um so yeah i would go i would go with her when my parents had divorced uh a lot of times my mom couldn't afford um a babysitter so she would bring me to the the hotel where she was playing oh cool where she was playing and i would just kind of hang out uh, quite a few times, I, I actually just sat underneath the piano and listened to the <laughs> listened to her playing. Right. Um, so yeah, that was that was her. Yeah, she was a professional musician. That's what that's what she did, and she still does it. Um, not so much in uh, hotel lounges and that sort of thing, but um, yeah, just just wherever. But yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. So I I grew up with with the music all all around. My dad loved music, but. Uh, couldn't really carry it too. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. well, most of us can't, you know, most of us that do love <laughs> music uh, also can't carry a tune. So it's, it's high school. You meet Brad, uh, who ends up being the bassist for, for three days of grace and, and three days grace basically formed out of high school. Yeah, that's right. We, we, I met Brad in high school and I also, I already knew uh, Neil Sanderson, the drummer from, 
Peterborough as well. So I, like I, I uh, knew a bunch of people in Peterborough, and the high school that I went to was actually in Norwood, which was about 30 minutes east of Peterborough. So that's where I met Brad. And then I got Neil and Brad together and myself and a couple other players. And we were, the band that we started then was called Groundswell. And um, we played we played a bunch of stuff. We did uh, like high school, um, we played some high school uh dances and that sort of thing and then did some weddings and some like backyard uh like hay wagon parties and just weird stuff uh, we basically played anything we could get our hands on and then um we eventually we decided to move to toronto to try to make it as a band so we did that and changed our name and then that was the that's sort of where it took off. Uh, it took off all right. How old were you guys when things, I mean, you, you must have been in your very young 20s when I Hate Everything About You came out. Yeah, I, I think I was uh, 23 or 24, maybe. How did you get discovered? Tell me how that all kind of happened, because it seems, you know, between high school and 22 or 23 years old and having a big hit on the radio, it seems like a, a relatively, you know, short amount of time. Yeah, we were, yeah, I mean, we, we moved from Peterborough to Toronto and we got a, an apartment together, um, the band did, and we all had day jobs. Uh, I was like a manager at a little, um, like, stir-fry restaurant and... Neil, the drummer, was working at the Gap, uh, you know, doing, uh, yeah. Selling and, jeans. Uh, Brad was, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Brad actually, he, he continued going to school when he got up to Toronto. So he, he kind of did it the right way and ended up going to business school and then became an accountant for a magazine. So he was the only one that had an actual real job, I guess. Right. Say. But, um, yeah, there was a few years of us just playing, like doing our day jobs and trying to play as many shows as we could in Toronto and then outside of Toronto we would go north to these little cottage towns and play like a weekend at a bar uh, to make money so we did a lot of that there was there was a few years of that and then eventually um we played a show and there was uh a producer there uh his name was Gavin Brown and he's the guy who uh, ended up producing our first album. Um, he was working for EMI Publishing at the time. So what happened was we played a show. Gavin was there. Uh, he invited EMI to come and watch us um, practice and that sort of thing. And they came and watched and basically signed us to a development deal, uh, which ended up being sort of like a they they gave us a chunk of money so that we could quit our day jobs. Um, get all the gear that we needed and just spend every day working on music. So that was really the start of it. Um, so yeah, it, it felt like the, the success of the band felt like it was overnight from meeting Gavin to getting the deal to making the demos and, and getting the song out there. But we, we had been a band for so long before that, you know, um, so yeah, it was it was definitely a lot of hard work, and the and the show that we actually met our producer at was almost going to be our last show. Like we had been doing it for so long, and not much had happened, and we uh, we were getting fed up um, with doing it, and we just figured that we were getting close to the end of like even bothering to try. And I remember it being. It probably our last show like you know, it was at a little bar called Clinton's in Toronto and we just happened to meet the right person at that wow that last show see that yeah, it was really close to not happening it was crazy when and it, then when and then happening. like back to the stir fry restaurant what would you have done <laughs> yeah well probably I think so I mean that would have been I I always planned on playing music regardless of uh, whether it was you know at, at the at the level that I guess three days grace did, or if it was playing in little pubs around Toronto, just making ends meet. Um, that was my plan, but who knows if that would have panned out. I think, yeah, I think I probably would have just stuck around the, the food, um, industry and maybe worked my way up to trying to be a chef or something like that. Oh, yeah? You know, I enjoy, I do enjoy cooking. I do, I do a lot of, lot of stuff at home and um yeah so maybe that's where 
it would have ended up. Wow. I wow. Think, I think I would have played music regardless. Just I, I just don't know at what level. Sure. What What about your yeah. first job, uh, Adam? Do Do you remember your very first job? Was it Was it that one that you were telling me about, or did you have a another job before that? No, I had I had a couple other jobs before that. Um, I think my first job was probably my first actual job where I was getting an actual legit paycheck. I think was pumping gas. Uh, at a little tiny convenience store in Norwood, Ontario, outside of Peterborough there. Uh, that was probably my first job. Uh, okay. I'm pretty sure it was. I mean, I had little jobs before that working, you know, doing landscaping and stuff for elderly ladies in the town, you know, do, just cutting their grass and that sort of thing. But no, that was that was my first legit job, pumping gas. First legit job was pumping gas, and you worked at the restaurant, and then we never looked back. Uh, so tell me a little bit about... St. Asonia and because, you know, and I've never, I've never had the opportunity to ask you this question, uh, which is, is such a big reason why I wanted to talk to you because, uh, you know, I've been in the rock radio biz for a long time. Three Days Grace was the, you know, maybe outside of Lincoln Park, Three Days Grace was one of the biggest bands in the format, rock bands, um, Humongous! You were, you, you know, you were at the top. You, you, you did it. You made it. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, for lack of a better term. And then, you know, we all heard that Three Days Grace was getting another singer, and you were going to form your own band. Can you tell me, a, mm-hmm. walk me through your decision to do that while you were at the, you know, the peak of success? Yeah, well, it really, it really all came down to I wasn't, um, I wasn't healthy. Like I, I didn't feel how, it had been years and years of kind of um, abusing my body and my mind with drugs and alcohol and that sort of thing. And I was in and out of treatment centers, um, you know. And then so it got to a point where it just felt like I, uh, you know, no matter how much uh, how much uh, time I needed away or I, I just couldn't find a way to basically to to uh, work on myself and it started to take me over and it got to a point where it was it was just unhealthy for me to continue touring and to continue the whole machine um, you know because it was nonstop like you said we were at at the peak and it was uh, it was rolling and it was a it was a massive machine that was just and I I didn't really see an end in sight, but I knew that I was, you know, in my my mind and my body were just um, not healthy. So that was that was the, you know, that was the main reason for for the decision that I made to leave the band. I wanted to take some time, and it just felt like uh, I wasn't going to get any time. Um, yeah, so that was that was the main reason. That, you know, after 20 years of being in a band with people, you know, there's always little clashes here and there, personality sure. clashes. And we, we were friends before we became the band. So it was, it, it was just a, yeah, a weird, uh, sort of a weird situation where I think we had all sort of changed in different ways. And, yeah. um, you know, yeah, we were just, you know, different clashes here and there, but really it, it came down to my, my mental well being and my physical well being, And I, I had to do it. So, I did it and took some time off. Um, yeah, and and uh, right when I left the band, uh, Mike Mushok from Stains, yeah. who was a friend of mine, he he reached out and asked me how I was doing, you know, just checking in, that sort of thing. And um, yeah, we got together, we did some writing, and it just went really well. We didn't really have any in- intention of starting another band, especially not a you know, like another kind of heavy active rock band. Um, we were just going to work on a couple songs and see what happened, but it ended up going really well. And we wrote more songs than we thought we would. So we ended up, uh, yeah, just sending the demos to the record label and they wanted to give it a go. So it all just kind of wow. started back up. <laughs> yeah. So what do you yeah. think, Adam? Like, thanks for being so honest. You were having some, some issues. You were going through some really personal stuff. And yes, mm-hmm. the machine, people don't realize the machine that Adam's talking about. I mean, it's just not, he's not just writing songs and like going through his everyday life. I mean, he's got so much shit to do 
writing songs, the publicity, the tour. I mean, it's it's nonstop. It probably got overwhelming at some point. You made the decision. But what did you think was going to happen when you were like, okay, I'm, I'm out, I'm, I'm done, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to work on myself and get myself in a better place. What did you think was going to happen from there? Did you think music was over for you? No, no, I didn't think I would stop playing music altogether or anything like that. I just, uh, I just knew I needed, needed to shut everything down for a bit and just focus on myself. I, I think I felt for many, many years that I was just focused on everybody else and everything else that needed to get done. And there was, there was, like you said, there was a, there was a ton of pressure to do things and it was hard to, like, it was really tough to say no or to, you know, to not, not do something or, or just whatever there was, you know, you know, it just wasn't, wasn't a healthy environment in general. So, um, yeah, no, I, I think I just mainly wanted a break, and I in my head I thought maybe I'll just do some acoustic albums and maybe I'll just keep it light and see what happens. Um, but really, after after some time away, it just um, became clear that uh, I need to write some more heavy rock tunes. <laughs> right. What was like your rock bottom thing? Was there something that happened to you that was like, okay, this is it. I need to get away from this. I, I, I mean, over 20 years of, of doing it, there were, there were many, many points that were super low. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of times where I was, uh, in a foreign country, um, and without, um, without what I needed to be normal. So right. I, I, you know, become dope sick in places like Brazil and Australia and, you know, places where I, I, yeah, I just didn't have, you, you know, didn't have anybody. You didn't know anybody. There's nobody to call to yeah, say help. Exactly. Yeah. Stuff like that is definitely, uh, they're super lows, <laughs> you know, yeah. when you're sick and not able to get out of bed and not really able to play a show, but, um, you know, that kind of thing. So there was, there was a lot of those over the years and those added up over time. Um, yeah, yeah. there wasn't a specific, there wasn't a specific, like I didn't end up in jail or right. institutionalized <laughs> or anything. So, you know, it wasn't a rock bottom like that, but it was, it's just the whole, the whole collection. Yeah. Of, well, uh, that's, that's, that's a, that's a rock bottom for sure. I, I can definitely relate, um, and understand. Mm -hmm. Were you, were you afraid that, Hey, I'm going to start this new band um, because I, you know, music is my life. I'm going to start this new band. I'm leaving this one thing behind that was extremely successful. Were you afraid that, you know, lightning striking twice, you know, was going to be difficult? Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I was afraid. I was, I think I was more so excited to, to try and, and do it again. Um, and try to sort of push and have uh, some kind of success with uh, with the new band. I, yeah, I don't think I ever um, really necessarily expected uh, to to reach that same level that uh, that Three Days Grace did. And and even nowadays, it's it's such a different climate. Like the the industry is so different now that uh, that. You know, Three Days Grace sort of got um, got into the music industry just kind of under the wire of, of before all of the, you know, just before all of the streaming and all that stuff. So it was a, just a different world. And um, so, yeah, I've never never really planned on or, ex you know, expect St. Asonia to, to reach that level. But we're, you know, we're we're still... We're still pushing a boulder up a hill, but uh, getting there. <laughs> I, I don't know about pushing a boulder up a hill, but um, I love the band and I love, you know, I love Mike. I hate to say super group. Some uh, one of a super group is, is it your brother that's also in the band? It's my cousin, Kale. Your cousin. Okay. And yeah. Kale, musical uh, from a, another musical family. Was he, you know, always been involved in this kind of stuff? Yeah, he's always been into music. He's uh, we grew up together. I was an only child growing up, uh, but I grew up with Kale and his brother Josh. So we we basically grew up as brothers. Um, and yeah, 
he's super musical. Same same thing. Like I was saying, our mom's side of the family is very musical. So we grew up playing music together. I remember us playing and putting on little shows when we were like five, six years old uh, for our parents and family and stuff. So yeah, we we have always done it. And he he actually played bass in a few different bands like Thornley. Uh, oh yeah. <clears throat> um, Art of Dying and, um, you know, just played with some other artists and stuff. So he's been, he's been around for, for a long time. So it's nice to have him in the band finally. And we are finally actually doing it, um, at this level together, which is, which is killer. Cause oh, we yeah. wanted to, it just never worked out. He's like a little bit of, um, I don't want to say safety net, but gives you a little bit of family. Absolutely. And it just kind of gives you that. It makes you feel like you're in a good place having him around. Absolutely. And a hundred percent. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's really important to be surrounded by, uh, especially for myself, just to be surrounded by the right people on tour and, and people that care and, and know your situation and that sort of thing. Right. Um, yeah, it's incredible having him uh, out there, you know, touring and sharing the stage together every night. And uh, yeah, just having him around. He's a he's probably the best. He is the best guy that I've ever known. And he's a super nice guy and gets along with everybody. So it's incredible to have him in the band. What are you doing when when you have some downtime and there's, you know, no machine, no writing? Like, what do you like to do? Uh, you know what? I spend time at home with my family. I have a, a six-year-old and a two-year-old. And when I'm home, it's it's all about just spending time with them. You know, they've... Uh, yeah, there's nothing like it. You get out on the road and you spend so much time away from home. When when you get home, it's just, there's no feeling like it. Just, you know, sitting down with the kids and, and chilling out. Yeah, and so. being like a normal dad and, and that normal life that everybody has 24-7, you don't get to experience it. So when you do get a chance to come home, I'm sure, you know, going to the soccer game or just l- running errands, I'm sure to you that's yeah. quality, quality stuff. It really is, yeah. Yeah, it really is. And and like you said, too, it, there's a certain point where, uh, well, for me, it was it was having a couple kids and realizing, you know, I, you, like you said, you don't really sweat the small stuff. There's, yeah, I just try to uh, try to enjoy, enjoy every minute, you know. It's, uh, and we're, we're here for a pretty short amount of time, so it's, do you do any hunting? Because I, I remember um, I had a, a long conversation with Barry. It seemed like, uh, you know, from Three Days of Grace, it seemed like hunting was his life. I, I haven't in years. I used to go with my, Kale and I actually used to go with our dads uh, when we were a bit younger in Canada. We'd do some duck hunting and goose hunting. Um, they would go deer hunting the odd time. But no, I haven't done it in years. And uh my dad passed a couple of years ago, so oh, sorry. It's kind of one of those things that was, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think he'd, he'd probably be the only person that I'd actually end up going with if I were to. So I, I don't really see myself hunting anytime soon. Right. I love to fish. Fishing all the time. Love to fish. A lot of good fishing in Nashville, or is it fly fishing, or what kind of fishing is it? I haven't fished in Nashville yet. Okay. I haven't been here long enough to, to scope it out, but... That is the plan. That is. Okay. Look, I, I really appreciate the conversation. Um, really, really cool to talk to you. Um, wish yeah, you all the no, success. Yeah, no, I appreciate you taking the time. And uh, yeah. Are you on all the socials? Do you want to uh, plug any of your socials? Or I am, yeah. I, I mean, I, I do a lot of Instagram. So I'm on uh, I'm on Instagram at Adam Gonche Official and uh, at St. Estonia. I'm always there as well. Um, Kale's usually the one in charge of Facebook, uh, and sometimes I jump over to threads, but yeah, we're, we're, we're on there. Great, great talking to you. Great conversation and, uh, and nothing but, uh, success to you in 2024. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. I mean, we're talking about a guy that reached the pinnacle of success for his dreaming, becoming a rock star. Okay, there's only a few bands that make it to rock star level. His band, Three Days Grace, was one of them playing big arenas, thousands, tens of thousands of people per show, 20, 20,000 people at a show uh, and more. 
and then all of a sudden didn't want to do it anymore. As far as we heard in the, you know, the world reading that uh, Three Days Grace has a new singer, Adam Gondier, is finished. He's done. Couldn't figure that out. Well, now him being so honest, it seemed like he had an addiction problem. And talking about rock bottom being in Brazil and not having the stuff that you needed to, quote unquote, be well, um, dope sick in another country. Wow, that was it's pretty heavy, pretty heavy stuff. And uh, again, I thought that was uh, very honest of him to share. It was something that I did not know prior to this conversation. First job, pumping gas at a convenience store. His parents were, uh, I guess, dad was a construction worker. Mom was musical. Mom was had a voice. She sang in some clubs and, and some hotels. And uh, I guess that's where Adam got his musical ability. Uh, by the way, not only Adam's first job pumping gas, he also said he managed a stir fry Restaurant, And if it didn't work out for him with Three Days Grace or St. Asonia, if he did not uh, work out in music, he said he would have tried to go the food route. He thinks he would have gone back to a restaurant, tried to manage, and then ultimately work up to become a chef, which I thought was pretty interesting. He said he likes to cook in his spare time. He does a lot of that, but mainly when he's not touring and being a rock star, he just likes being normal, hanging with his family, his kids, his wife, going on uh, errands. Normal. It's kind of what he likes to do when not participating on the machine. Awesome, man. Really cool guy. I was really impressed with Adam Gontier. The band is Saint Asonia. Their latest single is called Wolf, and it features John Cooper of the band Skillet. And of course, our past episodes available on CelebrityJobber.com. Please subscribe if you like this podcast. You'd appreciate a five-star rating. Leave a review. Available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you pod. And YouTube.com slash the at sign Celebrity Jobber. And you can also follow us on Instagram, Celebrity Jobber Podcast. That'll do it for this week. I thank you, as always, for listening. Until next time, I'm Jeff Zito.